So I was putting together a group. Okay, well, I need a group name that like shows that we're doing something a little older. Yeah, then I was thinking of all the different names for speakeasies. The Blind Tiger and the, you know, they know there's all this, these names, but all of them have been taken. But somehow the Gin Joints, I think I maybe found one band that hadn't recorded much that had that name, but it wasn't something that had been overused. And I said, oh, okay. We are Birch Pereira. And, and the, the Gin Joints. Joints. You're watching Band in Seattle. Bringing old-time Western soul into modern times, Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints are full of class. Pereira and I am the lead singer and bassist for Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints. I'm Daniel Renard. I play guitar in Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints and when I'm not playing guitar I'm uh, working for Holland America Line as a personal cruise consultant. I'm Jim Sisko and I'm the trumpet player for Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints. I'm also a college professor. I direct the instrumental music program at Bellevue College. My name is Josh Howe and I'm the accordionist and keyboardist for Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints and I play in a bunch of different other bands in Seattle. I'm Steve Dressler. I play saxophone and clarinet for Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints. And when I'm not out playing gigs, I'm teaching music. I lead improvisation workshops and teach at Seattle Pacific University. My name is Jimmy Haran and I'm the supporting singer with Birch Pereira and the Gin Joints. And when I'm not singing with that group, I sing sometimes with local artists, prom queen, as well as touring artist Pink Martini. Corvallis, Oregon. My parents were amateur folk musicians. They would do these house concerts or they would do shows at the local theater and I would come along to those. So I got to see a lot of musicians and I got to see these touring musicians. They would stay with us often and so I got to kind of get a taste of that life and it looked pretty fun. Then I was enrolled in this like elementary strings program and I chose cello. My whole middle school, high school, even beginning of college, I was in orchestras. So even though I don't really play classical music as much now, it's like something I really appreciate. And then when I decided to learn the upright bass, uh, the cello is a nice, you know, introductory instrument to get you there. Changes in the weather could make me feel safe. I like to pick up the acoustic guitar and just sort of write 
songs, and I, so I had sort of had these folky singer-songwriter songs. Early college, I think, and I have no idea even what happened to those songs. I couldn't even remember them. <laughs> but you know, I had a little phase, and I did some coffee shop gigs, and but I was a little too nervous at the time. I think I just wasn't ready to be out in front. You know, the bass player, you often can just kind of step back and let the guitarist and the singer and the horn players do their thing, and you can just kind of groove with the drummer and be a little more focused on like the music and close your eyes. And so I think I just needed that for a long time, but then I, once I just got more comfortable being a lead person, then I decided just to go for it, you know. No, I don't suppose the words that you choose Could I have anything to do with it? So you're searching, hey, hey, for an answer Could it be, yeah, some an older style, not everybody's interested in that. Or even if they're not interested, they just have a modern sound and they can't shake it, right? So it's like always about finding people who can evoke the sound of that era, because it's, it's harder than it seems. You know, you, you are kind of what you grew up with, right? So if you sound like whatever your influence is, whether you're a kid, and usually that's whatever's current. I wouldn't play with a guitarist who's just hard rock stuff, like it wouldn't fit, right? There's a lot of musicians who have that style, but they also know how to kind of like turn it off and then like, you know, bring a different guitar. Just knowing your instrument really well. I like playing with people who are just like really into that stuff. They've nerded out on what they play. After the break, you'll find out a whole lot more about Birch Pereira and the gin joints. I feel like in the last couple years, I've been really realizing how cool the accordion is. I can't explain this feeling in mind. I can't contain the loneliness that spreads in world. I can't refrain from mentioning your name. Every time they speak of love, I hope you Dan is an amazing guitar player. I met him many years ago, and he was doing the cruise ship circuit, just gigging and just seeing the whole world. You have to learn all these styles, right? I mean, talk about being a versatile musician. Like, I mean, they're throwing this top 40 music from all these genres and decades at you. He got really good at playing on those boats. You know, finally retired from that circuit, so then I started playing with him once he got back into town. And then, uh, since I knew he was such a good guitar player and liked all this old stuff, I just started, you know, we hit it off, and so I've been hiring him ever since. Recently, when I left cruise ships, I was introduced to him and um, was sort of playing uh, second guitar to Jason, but um, there, Birch had enough work that there was uh, plenty of work for, for both of us, and Jason has his own projects, I have my own, so um, one of us is usually on call for Birch. So. Birch is a wonderful guy. He loves what he does, and he's so good at it. He's just a natural talent, and I think he sounds like you know, a young Ricky Nelson. He's going places. <laughs> each other for a little bit, uh, just both of us being uh, in the jazz scene in Seattle. A couple months ago, the two of us were touring for a different band. Just started hanging out and playing together and it's been a lot of fun. I feel like in the last couple years I've been really realizing how cool the accordion is and how, you know, it just gets, it's underappreciated in general. He has a band called How Short that does old timey music. The fact that he also plays piano, then I was like, oh, I see. I don't always want a chord on every song. And so there, it's like, okay, I can pick and choose, have an organ sound, have a piano sound, have an accordion. I'd been just 
watching YouTube videos of accordions. I learned that a coworker of mine actually had an accordion, so I bugged him about it and was like, dude, can you bring the accordion for me to give it a shot? And one day he actually brought it in and I thought that this was the greatest thing ever. I tried it out and I went uh, to a used music instrument shop called a High Voltage, which is closed now, and they had one accordion in there and I bought it uh, that day. Every time they speak of love, I hope you do the same. I can't detain this in a better. It'd be a shame to never ever get the chance to show. Would you see it through if I gave up myself to you? What is a day I just can't say love I can't speak. Birch and I met, uh, I want to say probably four years ago now. A gentleman in town uh, named Michelle Novato. At a certain point, um, Birch joined Michelle's group, and then they were playing together, and I met them through Vito's, uh, just a little venue. I think we did a gig randomly together, uh, like a year later, and then got lunch that day and talked. And He was a student at Cornish, and I was gigging in the scene, and I just heard all these people talking about him. They said, you got, you got to see this guy, Jimmy. He's just got, like, the greatest voice and the biggest range, and it's just incredible. The big one, of course, that we did on the broadcast was St. James Infirmary because I had tried that. We recorded in my house and I said, right when we were done, I said, okay, the summing, it's kind of goofy, but I just want you to try like doing your opera thing. He characterizes the sound that he wanted me to do, especially at the beginning, as he's like, oh, it's a, whale, a wailing, and I say it's like my siren song, to <laughs> make the boats crash. <laughs> Let her go and let her go, God bless you. Wherever I first met Birch well before the gin joints days, maybe around 2003, 2004, just some jam sessions around town. And then our first gig together, we were actually playing in a, I was subbing for his friend Seth Alexander, another sax player, as an avant-garde jazz trio. We played at City Hall. Steve Tressler, yeah. We both uh, were raised Unitarian. He was working with them for a while, so he would actually call me and I'd go in and play. Just kind of recently, actually, I just was needing a sax player for a gig who could also double on clarinet, and I just said, oh, Steve. Never find someone sweet as she is to me. Well, the tune is, is a famous, famous tune, you know, it tells a very dark story. The roots are in, in traditional New Orleans style jazz. In particular, I think he gave me a solo on this tune because the trumpet has such a tie-in to, to New Orleans. There are some tunes where you absolutely need the lyrics to have some meaning. And St. James Infirmary can stand on its own melodically. Uh, I met Jim through Steve, actually. Uh, there was a video session I was doing and the trumpet player Ray that I usually hire couldn't do it. And then I was like, hey Steve, who, who should I call? And he was just like, oh right away, he was just like, oh, hit up Jim. It was sort of a natural fit and somebody just suggested, hey, you should call Cisco. And uh, he did, and, and I've been had a great time playing with him, you know, whenever I can help him out. song I do in the whole set. Taking the simple lyrics and then slowing them down so there's a lot of space and then just building up the arrangement with the solos. It's special. It's, it's definitely really unique and a different interpretation of that song that I think you would normally hear. I went down to St. James and me. I saw my baby there 
She was stretched out on a long white table So sweet So cold So When we return, uncover more about Birch Pereira and the gin joints. Cat Bula. Yeah, so um, I met her like, you know, the week before the show. If you ever change your mind, please let me know, which is my country ballad. <laughs> yeah, I was having a lot of fun with this one. I was just sat down on the piano and I just had this sad little melody and started trying out all these different verses and lyrical ideas. And then when we recorded it, I was like, I wanted this to sound like an old Hank Williams song, you know? And so I was like, we need fiddle. Now I know when a father's out, there's nothing you can do or say. Cat Bua. Yeah, so um, I met her, like, you know, the week before the show. I had that thought was, I knew Jessica was on the gig, of course, and I said, well, Jessica plays with a fiddle player, and I've seen her before, and she was really good. I was like, I wonder if she'd want to play, because on the record, I have one song that really features the fiddle. I thought, yeah, I mean, she's already there, right? Let's we'll see if she's interested. And she was very interested. Just right away, I was like, oh yeah, I'd love to. And then I brought her in on the Western Swing song too, because I just think, well, you know, she likes Western Swing, so why not? To love again, Jordan. is uh, definitely going to write more music that's going to be good. I think the world is his stage. Now I uh, expect big things for, for Birch. He's a pretty incredible uh, guy in a lot of ways. First of all, he has a real singular vision. He has a concept for what he wants musically, visually, and you know, in sort of all aspects for his band. You say no to a lot because it's very clear that they don't have their act together, you know, and Birch has his act together in all ways, and including organizationally from getting rehearsals together, and he has the whole package pretty well handled. With, with this release, he's, he's really hustling and got all kinds of these TV spots and looking to forward to see, seeing where he goes musically, and, you know, hopefully the band might get to do some traveling and play some of these, you know, Americana kind of festivals, that would be, that'd be fun. It can be variable, he can, he can run the gin joints, hey, he can do a solo show at the airport, he can do a, a three-person group, depending on the, the opportunity or the budget, you know, get the whole, the full-blown band with the horns and the accordion and the, and the fiddle. I think that the moment you decide that there is one goal that you have to meet and then you reach it, that'll just kill the music career and I, I don't really want to do that. So far I'm really enjoying playing with the people that I'm playing with. I like playing with Birch, I like playing in, in my swing band, I like playing in the jazz trio that I've been working on and Birch is great, yeah, he's, he's really awesome. I love his songs. I, he's a good writer and he's really professional, really easy to work with. He's also just very chill about it too. He's very good at letting go and saying like, okay, just try something like this. And he'll have us try a couple different things, And but he's, yeah, he's very uh, relaxed about it. <laughs> 
I think right now my biggest goal is um, putting some time into my own projects and I have been recording the last like four months off and on with Birch and with Jason as well. Hopefully in the next couple of months have the product done and so that I can start playing some shows. I would love to see Birch's group just continue to grow. He's had so much success it seems like in the last couple of years being acknowledged more by the jazz community but also the this community you know that's not so singular and is broad and creates an opportunity for so many people to be seen. Yeah, I just want to tour and, you know, I want to go down and play in Austin and play in Memphis and Nashville and then small towns all over the country and then make it out to Europe and go to Germany and go to Japan. And uh, I have friends who will travel and they'll play a gig at night and then go to the college during the day and do a master class. I want to do that because I really love teaching. I like getting into kind of nitty gritty of chords and styles and so I'd love to just do sort of a master class around what I do with the gin joints basically you know how to incorporate old jazz and mix it in with rock and roll and how to write horn arrangements for this kind of music and what kind of scales to use when you solo getting into all that like stuff that really helps make the music sound good To uncover more of the music that moved you tonight, go to bandinseattle.com where you can find out more about Birch Barrera and the Gin Joints and watch their full concert.